Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is John and I've lost over 130 pounds just through mindful eating, 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 and daily walking. Okay, okay, hold on a second. So if you've been watching my videos, then I'm sure you've heard me mention mindful eating. I know, I say it a lot. Mindful eating. But you may be wondering to yourself, what? is that? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain what mindful eating is and how it helped me to lose 130 pounds without a diet plan, no calorie counting, and literally eating anything I wanted to. It's coming up right now on The Cog is Shred. So all of my life, I have been overweight. I have always been a big eater and a fast eater. From a very young age, I developed a habit of overindulging on my favorite foods. And because of this, my eating habits were driven by impulse and cravings. Uh, and most of the time, I would eat until I was stuffed. Of course, this would usually leave me feeling sluggish and lethargic after most meals, but that was just normal to me because that was how I'd always eaten. I had a bad relationship with food and I had an addiction to overeating. I have tried so many different diets over the years. In fact, that will probably be the subject of another video down the road. But no matter which diets I tried, I was never able to make lasting change. And that's because the issue wasn't just what I was eating, but it was how I was eating. I approached most diets as quick fixes, but I never changed my eating habits or my relationship with food. And because I didn't change my impulsive and indulgent eating habits, I was unable to ever make real progress until I discovered mindful eating. Which brings us to the main topic of this video. What is mindful eating? In the simplest terms, at least in regards to what I did, it means paying attention to your body's natural hunger and fullness cues. Meaning I only ate when I was actually hungry and I stopped eating once I felt that hunger start to subside. It, it basically was just listening to my body. Of course, there's a little more involved than that, but that's the most basic explanation. I used to eat basically whenever food was present. I'd get up in the morning, I'd have breakfast, and then if I go to work and somebody brought in some donuts, I'd have some donuts because I like donuts. Then it'd be lunchtime and I would have whatever indulgent thing I wanted then. Then mid-afternoon comes, I'm bored, I want a break, so I'd take a coffee break and I'd go get a coffee with lots of sugar and cream and more donuts or whatever snack is available, maybe a muffin or a cupcake. Could I have a muffin or a scone? If I had a late lunch and I was not yet hungry, but friends wanted to go out to dinner, I'd be like, yeah, sure, because I loved eating and I wanted to go out and enjoy food. I, every opportunity to eat food was exciting and it gave me a hit of dopamine because I also have ADHD, which that's another topic for a video, but my ADHD makes me even more impulsive and I am driven by excitement and, uh, Eating good food is exciting. It triggers that reward center of the brain. So much of my eating and food habits were driven by impulse and excitement rather than actual hunger. Learning to pay attention to how I felt and how to recognize true hunger and true fullness or satiety was hugely helpful. And there are lots of people out there who just naturally follow those hunger and fullness cues. They eat what they want. They don't have a weight problem. They just stop when they're satisfied. They don't feel the need to finish everything on their plate if they've had enough. I'm somebody who always had to finish my plate. So... How did I learn how to pay close attention to my hunger and my fullness and learn what's true hunger and fullness? One of the biggest tools that helped me was just using a hunger scale. You can find them online. There are plenty of them. It's just a simple scale from one to 10 to rate how hungry you are. One being absolutely starving to 10 being unbelievably stuffed so full that it hurts. And you, you generally don't want to be on either end. You want to be comfortably in the middle and know when to eat and when to stop. And by the way, this hunger scale right here, I think is fantastic. And this isn't even the one that I used. This is one that I just found by Googling hunger scale. And I wanted to do that to show you how easy it is to find them. It's not something you have to pay for. You can just look up a hunger scale and follow it. It's just a general guideline for how to pay attention to your hunger and fullness cues. I love the way this one is laid out though, going from starving to painfully full and showing the whole range in between. And it shows the, those ones kind of in the middle, the more greenish ones are really your, your targets as far as 
when to eat and when to stop. Um, I totally agree with what it says right there. Number three, hungry. Ideally, the best time when you want to eat because you don't want to wait until you drop all the way down to two or one. Just like uh, if your car is running low on gas, you might not want to go all the way down to E, especially in the case of physical hunger, because if you get that low to the point where you're ravenously hungry, you might be more likely to just rush and eat a lot more than you intended to and then be stuffed. Plus, it's dangerous to deprive yourself of food. You could end up weak, you could pass out, you could be malnourished. You have to eat. I know from firsthand experience, when I had been mindfully eating for about a year, but I still was trying to lose that last 10 pounds, I decided to get restrictive and eat a bit less, and then get a little bit more restrictive because I was still trying to hit a certain number on the scale. I was going fine for a little while, but eventually it caught up with me and I had no energy, and I almost passed out just walking from my car through a parking lot. So. Make sure you're following your hunger and fullness cues and don't starve yourself. It is so, so important. So if you're eating when you're hungry but not starving, you can more easily eat at a, a better pace and it's easier to know when you're satisfied. I also love what it says for number four, a little hungry, where it says you're beginning to feel some of the stages but you aren't ready for a full meal yet. And this would be a good time for a light snack. I think this is great advice because normally midday, let's say um, I've eaten breakfast. Let's say I had a late breakfast uh, and I'm going to have an early dinner. Well, I don't want to have a lunch in between, but I may start to feel a little bit hungry mid afternoon, but I've still got three hours to go till dinner time. So what do I do? A lot of times I'll have a light snack. Usually I'll have something like an apple and some popcorn, just something that's going to help satisfy that hunger, but it's not going to leave me full for hours. So I'll be hungry again when it's actually mealtime. That I think is fantastic. I also love that it shows number six and number seven being satisfied and comfortably satisfied. And those are really good ideal ranges to be. Um, I think like it says, number seven, comfortably satisfied is you've had enough to eat. Most people feel this way after eating a regular meal, but you don't want to go all the way to full necessarily. Not that you can't, and I, I do plenty of times. Uh, I, I, I like to have some flexibility, but when it mentions full, when you're full, you're starting to feel a little uncomfortable. This is a sign that you've eaten more than you need. If you're trying to lose weight, you, you don't want to eat more than you need. You want to eat just enough to be satisfied. At least that's, that's what I did. I don't want to give medical advice. I'm just sharing what I did. I tried to eat until I was satisfied. And to do that, I would practice another aspect of mindful eating. See, this to me sounds very similar to intuitive eating. Intuitive eating is something else. And it's, I think what I did was somewhere in between intuitive eating and mindful eating, but intuitive eating is just kind of going off your instincts and, and what your body's telling you. With mindful eating, something else I did was I slowed down and didn't rush my meals. Mindful eating is eating without distraction. You want to turn off your phone, turn off the TV if you can. And nobody has time to do this for every single meal. But whenever I would eat, I would at least try to focus on the food and eat slowly. And I would put my fork down in between bites. I'd, I'd try some and I would really try to appreciate the flavor and the texture and the smell, the aroma, the temperature, just everything about the food and really appreciate every single bite, but without rushing because I have always eaten so quickly. It was just bite after bite after bite. I would just scarf my food down. I would eat, finish my food and sometimes go back for more. It takes about 20 minutes or so for you to start feeling that first sign of satisfaction. So by eating super quickly, uh, I didn't give my body enough time to let those cues reach my brain. So I would think, well, I still, I'm still hungry and I'd go and I'd eat more. And by the time I was done, I would be stuffed. And this is something I did on a regular basis. Eating mindfully and eating more slowly allowed not only time for me to appreciate the meals, but it also gave me enough time for those feelings of satisfaction or satiety to finally start to take effect. And I would realize a lot of times I'd start to feel satisfied before I finished a meal that happened quite a bit. And so I would eat. And once I started to feel satisfied, I was like, well, there's still food left. 
I'm not gonna throw it away, I just cover it and put it in the fridge. As time went on, after I felt that first sign of satisfaction, I would feel more and more satisfied after I stopped eating because I had already eaten enough. It just takes a while for those feelings to fully kick in. That was a big thing for me. And that was a huge help in the whole process of losing weight while eating mindfully. While I was focused on losing the weight, I would stop eating the moment I felt the first sign of being satisfied. Now today, my eating's a little different. I'll get into that in a little bit. But while I was focused on losing weight, that's that's all I did. Well, that's not, that's not all I did. One other thing I wanna mention, I was, I was also practicing intermittent fasting. Um, not even something I think you absolutely have to do. It's just something that I was doing. And basically meaning I, I would give myself sort of a, a feeding window. Around 11 o'clock in the morning or, or noon, I would have my first meal. If I felt hungry enough in the afternoon, I may have a light snack. Dinner time, same thing. I would eat just until I was satisfied and then I, was, I would stop. And that was what I did for probably about a, a good eight months. Eventually I stopped intermittent fasting. I, I started just eating earlier and earlier because I, I was hungry in the morning. Um, and I shifted away from intermittent fasting and just focused more on eating based on my hunger and fullness cues. And that has, has worked really, really well. Honestly, I would say the best thing that mindful eating has done for me besides the weight loss has been, it has changed the way I eat and the way I think about food. Before, when my eating habits were solely driven by impulse and indulgence, all of my eating choices were solely based on enjoyment and pleasure. Regardless of the effect it had on my health, regardless of how terrible I felt, and I didn't even realize how bad I felt until after I stopped eating that way and realized I feel so much better now, eating that way was making me feel physically awful. Now today, I still eat foods that I love. You have to love what you eat, I think. But my choices are made for different reasons. I, I find myself now making choices based on how the food will make me feel. I'm not eating as much of the indulgent, greasy, really, you know, fatty, carb-loaded, sugar-filled foods that I used to eat. I still do on occasion, but I've realized that I actually feel much better when I don't eat a lot of sugar and a lot of really greasy, fatty foods. Go figure, <laughs> the, the things people have been telling me for years. But that is what mindful eating has done for me. It has changed my perspective and my relationship with food and my body, something that I never thought I would ever be able to do because I was so addicted to eating the way that I used to eat. And the last thing I wanna mention in this video, cause really this could lead into the topic for another video, is that I mentioned that I'm not exactly practicing mindful eating in the same way today. Before, my main goal was weight loss. And I started noticing as I was getting down to around the 190 pound mark that I was actually getting pretty slim. And I was like, you know what? I think I'd actually like to build my arms and chest up a little bit and 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 fill out a little bit because I, I was looking a little slimmer than I, I kind of wanted to. And I also noticed that under my arms, I was dealing with a little bit of loose skin and I wanted to fill that in. You can see there's a little bit there. That's a, a topic for another video right there, loose skin. But back to the topic of this video, I mentioned that I was trying to lose the last 10 pounds. I was somewhere around 190 pounds and just trying to, to lose a little bit of the excess around my midsection and my face, you know, I wanted it to be a little less full. Well, when I tried restricting even more, like I said, I almost passed out. That, that was not the way to go. So what I decided to try was to do a body recomposition, meaning I would start lifting weights and eating more lean proteins and convert the fat into muscle. And, and it worked. Um, shockingly, I had to start eating a lot more food than I was used to. That was, that was not easy at first because I had gotten so used to eating such small amounts when I was just eating until I was satisfied. And now I was trying to eat a lot of protein and I was eating a lot of chicken and uh, tuna and a lot of other high protein things. And protein is extremely filling. So it took a little while to adapt to that. And I, I think I'll make that the topic of his own video. But man, the difference, the difference that I saw, even though I only dropped about 10 pounds, I think I lost a lot more than 10 pounds of fat, but I also gained muscle and it balanced out. And I could tell my waist was more trim, my face was slimmer, um, and I was just getting in the shape that I wanted to be. And now I'm, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. It's taken a long time to get here. Um, 
And even still now, I'm eating a lot of lean meats and fruits and vegetables, a lot of apples, bananas, avocados, nuts. Uh, I eat a lot of keto breads because they're lower in carbs and higher in protein. There's less sugar. I eat very little sugar. Um, but that's just on a on, on the average. I also eat a little bit of anything I want. I will still have candy. I will still have desserts. I will still have whatever, you know, it, Everything is about balance and moderation. Every once in a while, I will go out and have a ridiculous meal, but I also have noticed, and I need to wrap this up because I tend to ramble, but um, I've noticed again how I feel when I eat certain foods. When I eat the lean, high protein foods that I make at home, I can eat really big filling meals. Like this morning, I had two chicken burgers. They're lean, low calorie burgers, but they were, six ounces each. So that's 12 ounces of chicken on two low calorie keto buns. It was after a workout and I felt fine. I didn't feel stuffed. I didn't feel sick. I felt comfortably full and that, and that was it. Over the weekend, um, just for the heck of it, my wife and I had an awesome date day and we went out and I just got one burger and fries. It was this 80, 20 ground beef with cheese and the, the fr but when I ate that, I was already feeling stuffed before I even finished the burger. And afterward, my stomach just felt kind of rough. And the whole night after that, like the entire rest of the night, uh, I, I just felt like I had this heavy log just sitting there in my stomach. It, it just shows the difference. And it's one of the reasons why uh, these days, my choices in eating for the most part are driven by how the food will make me feel because I feel so much better eating foods that make me feel good versus foods that make me feel sluggish and sick. That doesn't mean I don't indulge every now and then, but I have a motivation to not indulge in those things all the time. And it just helps me stay more motivated to want to eat well and to take better care of myself. So in a way, I'm still eating fairly mindfully because I'm mindful of what I'm eating and how those foods affect me. And I know when I'm eating something that is much heavier and greasier, I eat less of it just because it will make me feel really bad in the long run. Uh, actually, no, it'll make me feel really bad right after. <laughs> That's the biggest motivation. On top of the fact that I still want to maintain the, the progress that I've made. Anyway... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because I think that's, that's enough for this topic for now. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and let me know if there are any other topics you would like me to talk about in the future uh, besides the ones that I kind of mentioned here and there in this video. As always, thanks so much. I, I just want to help to uh, encourage and inspire anyone that may be going through the same struggles that I was because for years I struggled with this. and. I'm so glad that I've finally been able to make the changes that I have uh, because I feel so much better and my health has improved so much. And so uh, if it's possible to help any one of you out there, I, I just want to do the same because um, I feel great. And so anyway, thanks so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to The Cog Is Shred. I'll be posting other videos related to my weight loss journey and lots of recipes for ice cream and low calorie foods and probably other stuff because uh, I'm really just talking about my journey and the things that I like that have worked for me and uh, sharing them with you. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.